From Amateur Radio Newsline Report, number 1,984, these are the Ham Nation headlines for Wednesday, November 11, 2015. The White House released a report on geomagnetic storms. It seems that hams aren't the only ones concerned with the damaging effects of coronal mass ejections. Late last month, the Obama administration released contingency plans that define roles everyone would play, from the largest federal agency to the smallest local business, in the event a geomagnetic storm strikes with epic magnitude. Now, with so many nations electrified and connected by technology and various intricate power grids, the impact of a supersized CME could have even more impact, knocking out satellites, GPS measurements, and stranding civilizations in a world without an operating infrastructure. The most recent instance on a small scale occurred September 28th. An intense solar flare erupted over South America with the resulting UV radiation creating a temporary blackout in low-frequency radio communications. Exactly one month later, on October 28th, the Obama administration released its completed plans, the National Space Weather Strategy and the National Space Weather Action Plan. And with that release came the announcement of a global strategy for agencies, nonprofits, and individuals everywhere to cooperate and communicate. The release of the plans comes a week or so before the military auxiliary radio systems simulated blackout exercise with the Amateur Radio Emergency Service and Amateur Radio Civil Emergency Service between Saturday, November 7th and Tuesday, November 10th. Timing, it seems, is everything. For Amateur Radio Newsline, I'm Bobby Best, WX4ALA in Jasper, Alabama. Thanks, Bobby. In Arizona, they're talking earthquakes. Hamex kicked off November 4th. Newsline's Stephen Kenford, N8WB, picks up the story. The first ever drill was designed to help amateurs understand their communication roles when disaster strikes their various communities. But the forces of nature may have conspired to drive that point home with an even stronger hand. After a series of minor earthquakes rumbled through the region just north of Phoenix, Arizona on Sunday, November 1st, a few days before hammocks was scheduled. The trio of quakes was considered rare, but radio amateurs were taking no chances. Morgan Hoagland, WW7B, communications manager with the Arizona Department of Emergency and Military Affairs and the Division of Emergency Management, said that three real earthquakes, however small, were certainly a surprise considering the Hamex mock disaster being staged was also centered around an earthquake. He told Amateur Radio Newsline, quote, This exercise caused us to make ready many, many amateur radio modes such as HF, VHF, UHF, Winlink, FLMSG, FNARS, and BHF Packet. We plan to make sure we keep all of the flexibility we display here for the future. End quote. 65 hams in Arizona and another 10 working HF outside of state were involved in the exercise, and the diversity of modes, both voice and data, proved to be the greatest strength of the exercise. More such drills are planned for the year ahead. When a few dozen hams in South Africa were cut off from civilization late last month, they had a few things going for them. They had their radios, they had their antennas, propagation was terrific, and, after all, it was just an exercise to prepare for the real thing. The Hamnet Summer Communications Exercise, held in late October in South Africa, was such a total disaster, just as everyone had hoped, that it proved to be a total success. Disaster was the whole idea, in fact, since the 60 or so participating hams working in teams had committed to operating their field stations in remote locations while living off the grid, as if some cataclysm had struck. All activities, including cooking, lighting and, of course, radio communications, were done under simulated emergency conditions. But the 16 stations across South Africa and in Namibia benefited from fortunate propagation conditions and the experiment went forward on the 24th and 25th of October as planned. To communicate, stations contacted one another via random two-word messages transmitted over channels instead of specified frequencies, comparing the results later. For Amateur Radio Newsline, I'm Jeremy Boot, G4NJH, in Nottingham in the UK. And finally this week, a new video is out about the AWRL School Roundup and a very special school club. 
Since late October, students in the Ham Radio Club at Bloomington High School South in Bloomington, Indiana, have been able to do a bit of DXing a little differently. The youngsters and their club have been starring in a seven-minute video about their Ham Radio Club, K9SOU. The video is a segment of a program produced each week by the school's mass media class. In the video, the teens, including club president Ryan Cutchell, KD9DAB, talk about their involvement in the hobby. And the video shows the young hams working October's ARRL school club round. Up. The club sponsor, Neil Rapp, WB9VPG, told Amateur Radio Newsline the kids fundraised a two-element step IR antenna a couple of years ago, and our contesting efforts really blossomed. 2013 Newsline Young Ham of the Year, Patrick Lissandru, KC9UUS, is a former member, and his younger sister Maria, KD9BUS, has been Bloomington South Club Vice President. You'll find more to the story and a link to the entire video in this week's Amateur Radio Newsline report. And that's all from the Amateur Radio News Line, your independent source for amateur radio news for over 37 years and counting at www.arnewsline.org. With Bobby Best, WX4ALA, Stephen Kenford, N8WB, Jeremy Boot, G4NJH, and Karen Eve Murray, KD2GUT at the news desk in New York. I'm Don Wellbanks, AE5DW, saying 73, and we'll see you next time here on Ham Nation.